Hi everyone, I'm Mohammed. And I'm Ariza. And we're here as students of McMaster University to answer your most asked questions about video games. Okay, so first question. What is gaming disorder? Well, gaming disorder was introduced in the World Health Organization's newest draft of International Classification of Disease, or ICD. They define it as when one has impaired control over gaming. This could mean that the gamer gives an increased priority to gaming over other activities in their lives and continues gaming even if there are negative consequences. That seems a bit vague, so then how do they actually figure out that it's actually a problem? Yeah, well, for gaming disorder to be officially diagnosed, the behavior pattern must be of sufficient severity to result in significant impairment in personal, family, social, educational, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. And this needs to have been happening for at least 12 months. All right, next question. What do video games do to your brain? Well, so in a recent study that I read, test groups each played either violent or non-violent games and had their brain activity measured. They were then shown violent images to t test their brain's reaction to it. It was found that people who had played a violent game were found to be less sensitive to those violent images and in turn had a slight increase in aggression levels. However, those who had also played non-violent video games in the test but had played video games that were violent in the past also show decreased sensitivity. If your brain is primed for receiving violence, you do show a lack of sensitivity. For example, most pilots at one point in their lives used a flight simulation game, and that's just to increase their um, awareness while flight, to prime them for it. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that video games are bad. Just like anything, it depends on how you use them. All right, so next question. Why that's are a good one. video games addictive? Yeah, so according to human psychology, players enjoy a game that satisfies the need for control, displays the player's progress, and builds relationships with friends and other players. Gamers all differ in their individual needs, so it really depends. So then how exactly do players satisfy these needs with video games? Well, some gamers may want to release aggression with Call of Duty, escape reality with World of Warcraft, or oversee some building projects in Minecraft. Others are more motivated by in-game rewards or have a low loss aversion. Wait, 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 what do you mean by low loss aversion? Well, they usually find games that other people find frustrating, exciting. So Flappy Birds and The Impossible Game are two such examples. <laughs> Okay, where do parents hide video games? Yeah, so I can see why this is a popular question. So for me, my parents didn't really hide video games. They used to hide the power cord of my gaming station. So in that way, I wouldn't be able to play video games um, either way, but yeah. Well, I guess in my experience, I, my parents usually had to hide the, my video games, especially my Game Boy Advance, away from me when I had low grades or when I got in trouble at school. But I usually find a way to actually get the game back by sneaking to the rooms in the middle of the night while they're sleeping and then actually climb up the actual closet to get the game and then rush back to my bedroom and play all night. When do video games become an addiction? Well, one of the signs indicating a gaming addiction is being preoccupied with gaming. But are there any other symptoms? Yeah, so there's withdrawal symptoms like irritability and anxiety. So when someone's game is taken away. But could there also be a lack of self-control? Also be like a sort of a sign for a gaming addiction? Well, of course. So gaming could also become an addiction when you start to jeopardize relationships, jobs, and opportunities in order to game. <laughs> what do video games help with? So, did you know that video games help players recognize objects and surroundings more easily? Plus, they're able to quickly learn and adapt a new skill. I never knew that, but then what else do they actually help with? Well, they also help players improve their mental concentration and ability to multitask between two or more activities. Oh, that's pretty cool. That actually reminds me of all the tasks I made my Sims 3 character do. Oh yeah, like what? Oh, you know, find a job, buy a house earn some money, basically all the things that I'm struggling to do right now. I see, yep, I can relate, I can relate. All right, so next okay. question. Is gaming a disease? So gaming is not a disease and it might not even be a disorder. Well, not as of yet. We will have to wait until later this year to see if the World Health Organization publishes it in their final edition of ICD-11. Wait, 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 are you saying that I can still play video games? 
Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, games are a great way to learn a new skill. So by all means, game away, as long as it's in moderation. <gasps> Yay! Thank you everyone for watching. We have been McMaster University students answering your most asked questions about video games. And please subscribe to the Demystified Medicine YouTube channel to watch more videos.